At hand on Church of Uganda Family TV, my name is Tuwahiri Bruno Edgar. Welcome to this special Friday edition, and there's a lot to talk about because yes, schools are getting holidays proper today. Now I know there are many schools already that got their holidays over this week, but uh, today is the day when it comes to the calendar of the Ministry of Education. So. As our children are going, are getting holidays, we continue to have conversations on the things that we must look at as parents, as grandparents, as relatives to ensure that our children make the most of this holiday. And making the most of the holiday starts with keeping safe. So we're going to talk about safety precautions and other walks that we must have with our children, spending time with them, discipling them, and it will go a long way to ensuring that the holiday is a success for us and especially for our children. Now, each other hand is probably brought to you by Frotea Hotel in Tebe. The weekend is here. What better way to enjoy your weekend than to go with your children who have just returned from school to Frotea Hotel and they get to have a good meal, uh, sleep in a good bed and enjoy time together as a family, especially uh, by the lakeside. So call the number on your screen, make a reservation and booking today and get yourself a wonderful experience at Protea Hotel and Table, not just for you, but for your children and as a family as a whole. Now, joining me to discuss uh, this issue as far as protection of children is concerned is a family, Ruth Chintu, who is a legal officer, directorate of chief uh, political commissariat at police headquarters uh, superintendent uh, ruth Chintu, that is you're welcome to each that hand thank you my brother yes good morning viewers as well as listeners yeah just like my brother said my name is ruth Chintu. i'm a superintendent of police and i'm the legal officer to the directorate of cpc that's where we have child and family protection department i'm, I'm a proud mother i'm a christian Oh, yeah. Wonderful. So uh -huh. you're the right person to talk about exactly. these issues. Now, yes. um, there are, I understand um, that many of us are excited mm -hmm. that our children are returning home from school. Yeah. Many of us are also anxious because we are now saying what are we going to do mm -hmm. now the bills are going high. The economy is harsh. The economy is also <laughs> harsh. Yeah. And uh, we are also asking ourselves what are, how are we going to keep our children occupied, what are we going to do with them mm -hmm. during the holiday. So mm -hmm. what are some of the major issues of concern uh, where, as we look forward to the holiday season for our children? Wow, thank you very much. Yeah, true. Some of us are excited having our children back home. Some of us are anxious. We don't know how it will be. Feeding alone, keeping them safe. It involves a lot of issues. However, we believe in God. Yeah, viewers and listeners, this is the second year generally when schools are operating in their normal ways after the COVID uh, problem. Our children are getting back home, some are already there. We have so many issues involving security and their safety as they enjoy their holidays. Yes, we caution both parents, children, and everyone around because it is everyone's responsibility to see that children are safe, and safety begins with us. First of all, I would like to inform our dear children that we love you, and since we love you, we want to see that you are safe. After the holidays, we want to have you back to school when you are safe and sober, so as we can move on normally. One, as a police officer, I want, I take this opportunity to caution you against wrongdoing. Uh, my brother, we have the Children's Laws, uh, the Children's Act, it has been amended. And we have the age of criminal liability as 12. So once you clock 12 years, you can be arrested and charged with any offense. So number one caution, let's refrain from situations, from instances of crime occurrences. As a child, as a girl, as a boy, please refrain from participating in crime because we shall have you arrested and we don't want that. And once you are arrested, you see your chances of going to school, your chances of living a better life can be shattered or curtailed because of involvement in such issues. So we also... Also on that, yes. um, 
as parents yes. because uh, yes um, it's important that the children know but as parents what can we do to ensure that um, our children are on the right side of the law because mm -hmm. as you know it okay. starts with parents yes thank you very much like i said it's everyone's responsibility to see that children are safe and among the responsibilities to educate, sensitize, and inform the children of what their rights are and what their responsibilities are. Holiday time is a time when parents, yes, some of us don't have holidays, especially parents who are not teachers. But even teachers can also have their time for scheming and everything. But as a parent, it is a God-given responsibility or some other extra burden or assignment that you have and spare time for your children. So as you work, as you struggle here and there to see that you put food on the table for the children, take off time and educate, sensitize, and inform the children of what their rights are. Inform children of what a good citizen must do and what a good citizen has to refrain from. So this holiday time, dear parents, let's take off some time and sit with our children and sensitize them about law abiding. Mm -hmm. About being law abiding, that's true and that's very important. Now, um, something that has gone under the radar over the past uh, couple of months, especially since we have had different, um, different uh, ailments to deal with, things like uh, the, the outbreak of Ebola and other issues concerning the economy um, something that goes that has gone under the radar is COVID-19 now um, the, there was a police officer that told uh, me that we are still turning a blind eye to the issue of COVID-19 especially when it comes to protecting our children against COVID-19 is that something that uh, we have to pay attention to during this holiday season yeah thank you very much the recent reports from the ministry of health and the world health organization are to the effect that there is an there is a new strain call it variant i'm not a scientist there is that name i've not yet mastered but COVID is real and is still in existence. It's still in our society. So children and their parents and caregivers and guardians, as we enjoy our holidays, let's refrain from loitering. If you have no business out, dear child, don't move out. Even a parent, as we enjoy this lapse and this freedom God has given us ever since the lockdowns, Let's be cautious and mindful of COVID-19. New strains and variants are emerging, but we pray, like I said, I'm a Christian, we pray that we don't go through the experience we had. Let's have our second normal academic year to the, to the end, that is December. But let us as individuals be cautious and let's do what it takes to refrain from contracting. Masks, I had recently, the ministry is calling upon us to have our masks. I have my mask here, but I, of course, that is a different thing. We, let's embrace masks, let's embrace the cautions and soaps as guided by the Ministry of Health and World Health Organization. But above all, as children, you know, holiday time, they enjoy loitering. So let us be cautious and caution them against moving anyhow. Now, of course, when it comes to, well, you know, loitering is a strong word, but I get... <laughs> where you're going because um there's always this discussion on the two sides of the fence yeah. there are these parents who like to lock their children in gates to protect them out my children to be safe but then there are those parents that say you know what you need to give um children a bit of freedom mm -hmm. to go to the neighbors especially if they're relatives to see them because they need to learn how to start being independent even though they are young so um, with this issue of COVID-19 and a new strain coming up, what do you advise us to do? Do we say, okay, let's lock our children in the gates and they stay at home and they don't move? Mm -hmm. Or are there, are there measures we can use to ensure that even when they go out and they see a neighbor or relative, mm -hmm. we can sensitize them on how they can be safe against COVID-19? Thank you. Um, locking children in the gate yes is one tip to a safety living a safe living however we have to allow some little freedom and interaction like i said let's be cautious in whatever we do let's be cautious if they are moving out 
Are they safe? First of all, safety begins with you. Are they safe? Yes, we have to visit our relatives. We intend to have them interact with their other relatives, the other side. But are they safe? So let's be cautious. Like we said, we have those measures. We may not necessarily leave them in the house. We can have masks, we can sanitize. If they are sick, if you sense some measure of sickness and discomfort, kindly let's refrain from mingling with others. That is one way of maybe cutting short the spread, the wild spread. If in case one has flu or cough, it won't go to the rest. Let's keep the one who is having issues at home. And as others move out, let us ensure they are safe because apart from COVID, they are exposed to other risks. We have sexual abuse. So in the name of visiting relatives, are they safe? Are they exposed to sexual abuse? So as we are cautious about COVID, let's also be cautious about other risks that they can be exposed to, and let's guard so that we mitigate the impact and occurrence. Indeed. Now mm -hmm. let's get right into that issue. I know that it's a very heavy topic, but mm -hmm. we have seen many examples of it happening in our communities mm -hmm. and in our societies. The issue of sexual violence, sexual abuse mm -hmm. uh, against especially the girl child, but also um, something that uh, we may not uh, say a lot because a lot of things these days are geared towards the girl child, but also mm -hmm. against the boy child mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in the homes. And many of us might say, well, they are, it happens by strangers, mm -hmm. by uh, neighbors, people who are not from the home, but we have seen that parents are doing this, that relatives are doing this, people who are supposed to protect um, these children. I remember there's a story that has been making the rounds in the newspapers mm -hmm. about a grandfather who um, defiled these children, yeah. uh, his grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So in in the midst of such um, a, an environment of, or, 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 of sexual abuse against children, what can we do this holiday to ensure that they are protected? Both in the home mm -hmm. and outside the home. Thank you very much. Uh, children are exposed to so many risks. But the most hurting risk is the sexual abuse. And sexual abuse can be perpetuated by strangers, the environment, wrong characters in, the, in our neighborhood, and worst of all, by the very people who are supposed to protect the children in the inner circle. So we've had so many cases where children are abused by their own biological parents, blood relative, live-ins, for example, scaries, our workers in the house. It is very unfortunate. And as police, we condemn child abuse and above all sexual abuse in the strongest of words. In these holidays, it is a challenge. It is unfortunate because the economy, like people sing it, is harsh. Mommy will be away, the caregiver, father, daddy, and every person who is charged with the care of protecting these children is outside hustling to put food on the table. Unfortunately, the one you are struggling to protect or to feed is being abused. It is very, very unfortunate. However, we can do so much. We can do so much to protect these children. First of all, let us teach the children some of the safety tips. Personally, like I said, I'm a parent and I always sit with my children. I tell them, no person should ever see your genitals. No person should ever see your private parts. Apart from a medical doctor, when you go for a visit or when they come here. Apart from maybe me, when you have an issue. I also allow them to talk to me privately. They are young, but when he has an issue to do with his privacy, he will whisper to you, Mommy, I have a personal issue. Let us encourage our children to be protective of their sexual areas, their private areas. Not every person should tamper or have a look or should have access to your sexual areas. However young a baby may be, let's teach them those are private and sacred areas that has that don't have to be accessed by any person. Then too, let us also avoid situations that can, ex um, can expose them to sexual abuse. For example, parents, some of the parents go wild. You drink, you come back drunk, you start uttering wrong words, you start trying to engage in adult issues when the children are watching, you are abusing them and exposing them. So as parents, we can do so much Let's sensitize them. Let, let us tell them those areas are sacred. 
Let us also refrain from teaching them indirectly, indirect teaching, because that is also abuse. Then if we can avoid at all costs, if we can avoid some of those strangers, if we can avoid some of those instances that can expose them to sexual abuse, kindly let's do so. Now, Afande, in your experience, mm -hmm. what are some of the red flags or the pointers? Uh, because we can do our best to uh, you know, protect them from domestic workers, like uh, house managers, house hopes, mm -hmm. ascaris, or even strangers outside the community. Mm -hmm. But what about from those who are part of the family in the home, the, the core circle that you talked about? So what are some of the red flags or the pointers that can show us that either a parent or someone close or a relative who is living in the house mm -hmm. is um, is uh, is it's carrying out yes uh, sexual abuse on a child because we need to know because mm -hmm. sometimes as parents we take it for granted no he, that's his auntie his auntie can't do that to him or that's uh, his her grandfather her grandfather can't do that to her what are some of the 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 indicators the indicators that show us that mm, there's something wrong here thank you. Uh, I'm looking at an ideal home or an ideal house, not a bedroom separated by... It is unfortunate to have children raised under such situations, but it happens for one reason or another. Ideally, I would look at an ideal house where we have to have separate beds for children, for girl children, and separate beds for male children, male visitors, female visitors. Some of the indicators that there is a sexual encroachment going on on a minor can be the way the minor relates. This is a young girl of four years. She's following a cousin who came for holidays of 17, 16 years freely. You leave them alone to watch, in the name of watching TV, you leave them alone in the sitting room or in their bedroom. Some of us parents have TVs. I, I won't comment about that. But some of our parents have TVs in the bedrooms where those children rest from. So you, you allow the mingling in the wee hours, in awkward hours, in quiet times, because you are tired for one reason or another. So those are some of the indicators. If you see this small girl is so close to this other boy, be it a brother, by the way, a biological brother, they are so close, they are doing things separately, they are avoiding others to, to mix up with them. Those are some of the indicators. And some can be physical. At times you realize when the abuse has already happened. So let us always have time. When you see some limping, I've talked about the, the, the closeness, the secrecy, they are trying to withdraw from the rest. Then the limping, their physical, um, their physical indicators that may be some abuse. Because at times, much as we so much want to be proactive, that is to avoid, at times you have to be post. When something has happened and you have no choice but to intervene. So at times the limping, at times the behavior, so, so much. And this will require you as a parent, us mm -hmm. as parents, to yes. monitor our children, mm -hmm. to know what's going on with our children's exactly. lives, to study them, to be observant and say, exactly. this child is limping, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And that brings you to the point of quality time. Mm -hmm. Now, you said we live in an economy where um, things are a bit difficult, and that is true. Mm -hmm. And many of us as parents are making, trying to make ends meet mm -hmm. now. Um, for many of us as parents, as the term comes to a close, we already think ahead to the beginning <laughs> of the next fees. term because of I school understand. fees. I and that means that we are up and about uh, okay. trying to find, look for money and find a way of paying the school fees mm -hmm. and ensure that our children have every basic need they, ha they need mm -hmm. in the home. Mm -hmm. But that, so, that some, sometimes it means that as parents, we dedicate a lot of time to our work and not enough time to our children and unfortunately if there's no quality time that means you can't see certain pointers like that you can't see <laughs> the child is limping why is the child limping or even worse still the children can grow distant from us and they might not feel comfortable to come and report to us and say uncle mm -hmm. uncle so and so did this to me so or when it comes to this holiday mm -hmm. how can we ensure that we spend more time with our children. What are the things that we can do to um, create more um, quality time and intimacy between us and our children? Thank you. Uh, once you become a parent, that is a, a calling. 
that is my personal belief. It is a calling from God because men have really tried to be parents and by any reason they are not able to be. Once you become a biological parent or a legal parent or a situational parent, you know you have an extra assignment from God or from, or from the biology, factors of biology. So you have to strive by all means to create quality time for the people you are taking care of because us as Christians know at one point you will have to give accountability for everything, every assignment that was given. We have places of worship. I won't incline so much on the Christian faith. We have our brothers who are Muslims, we have traditionists, we have other people. Uh, my brother, we have places of worship. They always organize holiday time. As parents, where we have failed to create time due to work or any other challenge, for example, at church, churches organize holiday packages. You can put in some small money, they take our children for camping, things like Chisaka, those related um, uh, sessions are all normally created to fill in a gap that are not be, that have not been filled ably by the parents let's embrace our such arrangements and have our children at least they are people who are ready to be parents whereas us as parents are busy you can entrust your child with uh, as long as you trust the it is in the best interest of the child. We have churches, we have mosques, we have schools. Some schools arrange like seven day camp, something like that, where skills, values, faith, principles will be imparted in the children. That can also act as quality time. But as a parent, like I've said, you have much more to do to create that small time. You don't have to have a lot of hours talking to these children. The little time you have with them, be it at night, be it 30 minutes, be it 40 minutes, can create an impact in these children. But where you cannot, let us embrace such arrangements. They will still be in the best interest of our children. Indeed, and even in line with that, mm -hmm. um, something interesting is, again, about excitement. Some of us as parents get excited, mm -hmm. and um, even following with what you just advised in terms of ensuring our children um, go for holiday camps and uh, can enjoy their, uh, holiday, their holidays to the maximum, mm -hmm. um, we end up uh, spending a lot of money and uh, sometimes this money does not equate to quality time or to the growth of the child. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you have to say to that in terms of the relationship within, between um, how much we spend and um, how prosperous the holiday is for our children? Wow, thank you. Yeah, in the name of trying to please our children, we may want to spend so much, unnecessary spending, I urge, all pol uh, I urge all parents to spend within our means. Yes, leisure time is part of a child development uh, lifetime. However, let us spend responsibly. Let us spend within our means. Don't overspend. Then when the term opens, you go disturb the basa, please allow. So the little we have, there are so many places. Instead of going where it is very, very expensive, you can go somewhere where it is moderately cheaper. Uh, don't overspend on luxuries. Yes, even as you go out to, to have leisure with them away from home, to kill the boredom from the dormitories, let us be mindful of our earnings and expenditure and let us have at the back of our mind that after three weeks, only three weeks, 21 days, we shall have to pay that bank slip and the children be allowed. So as parents, I urge you as we embrace the time we have with our children, as we enjoy the time with them, let us spend responsibly and within our means. They will still be our children. And when things have changed, you can always have, to, you know, fun. You can never get tired of fun. So use the little you have to get what is appropriate and not overstretch. Indeed, and uh, we need to put our heads uh, in the right place uh, mm -hmm. to not uh, be overly uh, zealous and then you find yourselves uh, not at a point in time, mm -hmm. especially when they are going to school, not able to provide for our children. Exactly. Now, you spoke about how you're very open with your children, mm -hmm. especially in that matter of um, their body. Mm -hmm. 
and again though although this equates to quality time it also equates to the fact that our children should know their rights and responsibilities exactly and um, first they have to be responsible so mm -hmm. we have to ensure that um, they are undergoing in activities that mm -hmm. help them grow this responsibility mm -hmm. so which means um, we have to ensure that we give the, they, they can learn skills mm -hmm. Um, whether vocational or co curricular that will help them be responsible people in the future. Exactly. So what is your say on that, on the fact that um, we have a charge to ensure we teach our children how to be responsible mm -hmm. and uh, that we teach them their rights uh, um, as children? Dear viewers and listeners, uh, let me just give you, take you back slightly to the genesis of children's rights. We have the International Convention on the Rights of Children it's, it spells out the rights of children. That is the international. International meaning Europe, America, whatever country subscribes to it. Then as Africans, that is the regional. Now, we are now at the regional level. We realized some things were not applicable in our situation. All of you will believe with me that the situation in Uganda is not the situation in UK in terms of the economy, social well-being, and everything. So the African countries realized if they blanketly take the, the Convention on the Rights of Children as it is, they may not be able to apply it. So they sit and come up with the African Charter on the Rights of Children. This one now introduces responsibility. As you enjoy your right, you have a responsibility to do. For example, a child has a right to education. Then a responsibility as a child, do you do that homework? Do you keep well your books? Are you the kind who comes home and reports, my phone was stolen, my geometry set was taken away? So as a child, as you enjoy your right to education, you are supposed to keep that bank sleep well. For example, Saturday that during uh, exams, the basa will not chase you for not having, that is a responsibility. So we are in holiday time. We call upon parents to teach children responsibility. Let us not sing al along, uh, alone rights. Let us also inform our children as you have a right to a clean environment. A 12 year old, a nine year old has a responsibility of help sweep the environment. Let's not leave um, every work for the nanny or the housekeeper. Let us involve, because tomorrow there will be adults. The age of majority or maturity is 18. So if your child is 14 years and doesn't know how to mob, when will he or she learn how to mob? So that is the responsibility. You have a right, but you can participate. Participate at the level that your body, physical appearance, and age can allow. So we're talking about co-curricular activities. Recently, there is a government policy by the Directorate of Industrial Training you know, we are shifting from cram work, fight collar job training, and the government now wants children right from baby class to have a skill. By the time they graduate, you can graduate with Bachelor of Social Science, but when you can actually bake, when you can actually sew a skirt. So this is holiday time. Dear parents, those who are able, they are neighbors who have sewing machines. They are neighbors who are running bakery uh, arrangements. It can be time to keep these children away from moving around anyhow. Let's pay some small fee. If you can, it is not mandatory. But if you can, instead of leaving them in the house to watch TV from morning to sunset, you pay some small money in the nearby confectionery uh, shop or business so that they can know how to mix, how, how to bake. We have computer, these ICT kiosks. As long as they are safe, you know, the law is everything has to be in the best interest. Don't let your 16-year-old girl go to this gentleman who runs an ICT kiosk alone. You can always weigh which is best. If you have a boy or if you, ha if you have many, you can enroll them at a nearby vocational or whatever for those two weeks such that they learn a skill. In any way, they are learning a skill, they're enjoying their holiday, but they are being responsible. You never know that skill acquired can help them in future. 
indeed and uh, that's very imperative so that um, the future is secure as far as mm -hmm. our children are concerned and we shall see that as a country we shall benefit from having children who are skilled and who are able to use the blessing that God has given us mm -hmm. in terms of a God blessing the works of their hands. Now, um, Ishtar Han is going for a quick breather after which we continue with more safety precautions that we must be aware of as our children our children start their holiday. Don't go anywhere. You are still watching Issues at Hand on Church of Uganda Family TV. You are still watching Issues at Hand on Church of Uganda Family TV. Yeah, for you, for those of you who have just joined, my name is Bruno Edgar, and I'm joined by uh, Afande Ruth Chintu, who is a legal officer to the Directorate of uh, Chief Political Commissariat at Police Headquarters. Now, I know I mentioned at the beginning that many of us are excited uh, about uh, the fact that our children are uh, just starting their holiday season. But then there are those of us who are anxious, and I said they're anxious, as parents we might be anxious because we want to know what food we are going to give them, do we have the means to take care of them, and what they're going to do over this Christmas period. We already heard from a fund who said we can take them for holiday camps, um, projects that uh, can keep them engaged. We can also um, start giving them necessary skills that they can use in the future and things like that. But there are those parents who are anxious for a different reason. And although many of us um, don't, are not aware of or I don't like talking about these subjects, they really do happen in families. And that's in cases where, uh, uh, unfortunately, where the parents' uh, spouses are either separating or are getting divorced. And um, usually this can be a very very trying time for a child, especially if the child is at school. And so uh, I find I understand that the best um, time to sort out issues of custody, for instance, is during the holiday season. Mm -hmm. So that, um, the, uh, of course, the child is pivotal to that case. And um, this, this can be handled during the holiday season so that in school, um, while in school, the child is not uh, conflated and disrupted by these issues. Thank you. I'll begin by quoting my family law lecturer's words. If circumstances permitted, the best person to be with a child is mommy and daddy being one. I end the quotes. However, if circumstances permitted, meaning there is always an exceptional to the general wish. We have so many families unfortunately breaking separating, divorcing, or for some reason they can't stay together. Mommy and daddy cannot stay together. And like the saying goes, where two elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. At times it dries, at times it breaks. We have so many. Actually, that, were, that is one of the, our core mandate, to see that families that cannot keep together remain safe and the children don't become victimized by the separation or divorce. We normally have challenges when terms are beginning. That is when a lady or a gentleman or lawyer or some, someone will come with a custody order. Madam, the term is beginning. I was, this is 25th May 2023, for example, and the court order was issued in January or in March. So under the amendment, the, child, the Children's Act Amendment 2016, I understand it is Section 73B or se Section 73C, it talks about custody by agreement. Yeah, mommy, you want so much your child, perhaps your only child, the father also wants so much. And in most cases, we, we use children as, as bullets. Cool? Uh -huh. <laughs> you want to shatter the other person, it is the innocent child you use as a blade. So I would urge parents, yes, I'm not decampaigning legal battles in court as a lawyer. However, the best way to raise a child is by agreement. If the two of you can't live under one shelter, let us take this time. Let's challenge one another. Let's use these three weeks 
mommy and daddy, you blocked yourself. You can no longer communicate. Normally, the first thing I tell people when they come over such issues in office, issues happen between the two of you. You met as adults and you cannot stay together, which is okay. You are not the first, you are not the last. However, don't block one another. Parents, I speak as a mother, I speak as a lawyer, I speak as a police child protection officer. Let us avoid situations of blocking. I normally urge parents to respect. Mommy, you have chosen to move out of his life. Daddy, you have chosen to move out of his life. Don't call to provoke him because you know he's in another relationship. Don't call at midnight. Don't, you call when it is appropriate for the business of the child, the innocent child, and in the best interest of this child. Don't block one another. And once you can't block, even a matter in court, you can always sit before the trial judicial officer and say, but we can agree to have custody. What are you proposing? Let me have custody or during class time or during school time. Let us share the holidays. It is a sweet thing for every parent to be near, as long as God gives you breath. So I'm urging parents, I won't stop you from going to court. I won't stop you from taking your personal decisions. But I would kindly urge you to allow this section of the law apply in your custody battles. You can have custody by agreement. Much as you don't want to see eye to eye, but you had this child. This child never applied to be born. So don't subject this child to hatred. When the child is in the care of the mother, you will talk bad about the father. When the, the father takes the child, your mother is bad. Let us avoid using children as victimizing them, actually. So I would urge parents, in these three weeks, let's challenge one another and agree. You can invoke that section 73C or be custody by agreement. My brother, two parents can agree. You write, I'll have the child between these, these days, I'll have the child, and you can go to court and have it sealed. It becomes a court order. That is the best court order you can have. Rather than having prolonged legal As battles. At times, personally, I've broken into people's gates. In, in the name of enforce, enforcing a custody order, the order says the child shall go to the father on 30th. It is false. The mother has not brought. You try to call her as a fellow woman. She abuses you. And the law allows me to take all lawful measures to have the child. But why would I pull a child out of someone's house? Can't mommy and daddy, irrespective of what happened, the two of you can still agree. This is, a, this is God's treasure. That doesn't have to be victimized. So in the 21 days, I urge parents, whoever has custody issues with the other spouse or the other parent, I urge you, whoever is watching me, whoever is listening to me, I urge you to embrace that section. You can sit and agree, yes, we can no longer stay together, fine, which is normal. However, you can agree in, uh, in regards to who should have the child when and for how many days and what should, what should I pro provide in case the child is the other side. Kindly, it will work wonders, I so believe. Indeed, and uh, that's very good advice. Thank you. And at the end of the day, like you've said, it's important not to use uh, our children as weapons of mass destruction in this war. <laughs> and it's not a war, it's just um, you, it's better you agree rather than, um, like you said, you're not stopping anyone from going to court. Mm -hmm. But if you can agree between uh, yourselves, as people used to say, eye to eye, mm -hmm. then uh, you'll ensure that uh, the child is safe and prospering and you both get the opportunity to be with this child now talking about children um we have issues in our community and in uganda uh, concerning children when it comes to things like uh, kidnapping and child sacrifice how can we ensure this holiday that our children are safe from such vices it is really unfortunate that we still have such barbaric mentalities you look at someone's child, and surprisingly, my brother, they don't sacrifice their own. I don't know whether those bad spirits, you call them those small gods, I don't know whether they don't want blood bearing your very own DNAs. I really feel so bad hearing that a certain child was kidnapped and found mutated somewhere, the body is dumped somewhere after someone taking off those other body parts. 
These are holidays. Dear parents, caregivers, guardians, and dear children, no one, the devil is there fighting against your well-being and safety. Kindly, like I said, safety begins with you. Refrain from situations, from positions, from places that can expose you to child uh, sacrifices where people can grab you, where you are helpless, no one can help you. Move in a group, always be near elders and elders who matter, elders who will serve your best interest. Dear parents, let us avoid taking and exposing children to those bad things. Some of us practice witchcraft and juju so to say and some of us do it at home when someone some of you perhaps even bring those other funny funny chicken and goats and slaughter in the presence of children so you are exposing them to such risks and in terms of child sacrifice child mothers child marriages children parents caregivers and everyone responsible responsible kindly let us report let us be our our brothers neighbors let us not be like Cain in the Bible when asked about the whereabouts of his brother he said am I my brother's keeper let's be our brother and sister's keepers when you see something is fishy at least every out of ten people in Uganda nine have have phones I won't say whether it is um, these analog like you say analog phones or smartphones but at least nine out of 10 or 8 out of 10 have access to a phone. We have numbers which you can raise on top of being each and everyone's guard when it comes to child protection. Let us raise some numbers. You know the LC um, within our areas. There are LCs, there are police posts uh, in metropolitan, in the villages, at least a police post is some meter, kilometers away from our home. But at least in the villages, there are elders, there are responsible elders you can run to if you can't alone help out a child that is in danger. Uh, my brother, the government and its partners have availed and sponsored toll free numbers. Someone can just raise 116 child helpline wherever you are, whether you don't have airtime. As long as your phone has a battery, you can raise 116, you can raise 112, you can raise 999 and report a child-related danger. Some other person will intervene. You will have done your part. Let's hope one another. Let's hope the vulnerable. And above all, let us be our neighbor's watch. Indeed. Now uh, we are quickly running out of time, but uh, very quickly. Um, as Church of Uganda Family TV, as children of God, as people who believe in the saving grace of Jesus Christ, as people who are practicing uh, Christians, mm -hmm. what do you have to say? And it's good that um, uh, you're a child of God as well. What do you have to say about praying for and with our children this holiday season? Thank you very much. As we do all the above we have submitted on, as we protect, as we work hard, as we sensitize, as we teach, as we do everything, there is that other supreme being, the one who made you a mother, the one who made you a caregiver, the one who made you a legal mother or a legal father, the one who made you a teacher, the one who made you a reverend over those children, whoever has charge over children, it is this time that I'm calling upon you to pray. Let us seal these children with the precious blood for those who are believing in Christ Jesus and for others who are believing uh, the Islamic faith, whichever. There is also that, that thing you have in you that there is a supreme being above everyone. Let us crown our children's future, our children's well-being with that supernatural person who cannot be compromised, who cannot be bribed, who cannot be challenged, that other supreme being. I urge all parents to take this holiday time to pray for your children. Pray for them, pray with them, those who can fast, because there are so many dangers. Even in schools, my brother, they are not safe. Some of us used to think in boarding, your child is safe from border border accidents, from child, these other people who grab them for sacrifice, 
However, they are no longer safe. We remember an, an unfortunate incident in Ntungamo at the beginning of the term. A small boy murdering by burning off the other two ashes. It is really unfortunate. Let's pray for protection of our children. Let's seal our children with the precious that other protection. I'm not ashamed of Christ Jesus. Let us seal the children with the precious blood of Jesus where the devil can never ever access our children. For those of you who believe in other super other beings, personally believe in God through Jesus Christ, but in whatever line you believe in, at least you know at the end of it that there is a supreme being. Let us pray over our children, safety, provi providence, protection, wisdom. You remember King Solomon prayed for wisdom and he's the wisest man we've ever had. Um, and let us also teach them to pray for themselves because there are situations where you'll be stressed, where you'll be sick. They have to learn. That is another responsibility. They have to learn to pray for you and for themselves. So I urge all caregivers, I urge all parents, let us pray and dedicate our children to God. It is only God who can protect them. It is only God who has better and best plans for them. Even your job, where you get money for school fees, even their health, it is God at the end of it all who is supreme above everyone. Let's pray for them and pray with them. Thank you so much indeed. We have to ensure that we are praying for them and with them and uh, teaching them how to pray as well. Thank you, Afande, uh, Ruth Jintu, for coming here on each at hand and uh, giving us this wonderful piece of advice as well as protecting our children during this holiday is concerned, especially when it comes to ensuring they have a success, successful and prosperous and worthy holiday season. Now, um, let's ensure that we follow this advice, we put these practices into into uh, practice as well to ensure that our children get the best from this holiday season. Now, um, that's issues at hand for it this week. Uh, tomorrow, um, there is more here on Church of Uganda Family TV, but of course, on Monday, we'll be back uh, with issues at hand. So, uh, ensure you continue con tuning in to the rest of the programming here on Church of Uganda Family TV. For now, it's ciao from us. Have a blessed day and a wonderful weekend.